Coming up on today's show, we're going to round up the latest Lamar Jackson to the Falcons rumors as ESPN's Jeremy Fowler reported on that. Plus, speaking of ESPN, Mel Kuyper dropped his first 2023 mock draft. So we'll check out who he has Atlanta taking at number eight. And we've got the latest update on the D.C. search. But let's start today's show off by looking at this report coming from Jeremy Fowler, who is predicting that Lamar Jackson may be making his way down 75 and two. Atlanta. Let's see exactly what Fowler said in his write-up. The Ravens don't have any plan to let Jackson hit free agency, so the franchise tag is expected. The question is, which tag do they use? The exclusive franchise tag, which would pay Lamar Jackson around $45 million, allows the Ravens to retain his rights no matter what. They can still trade him and could control the terms. Now, he also went on to say, I don't believe Baltimore wants to deal him in conference and have to see him on the field, a high-ranking AFC exec said. If that leaves NFC teams, then multiple people believe the Falcons would make, a, would make sense as a destination. General Manager Terry Fontenot and Head Coach Arthur Smith have spent two years cleansing the roster and now have an estimated $56 million in cap space. I know that this has been a topic we have discussed at length here on the channel, but I do want to remind you guys, if you were a Broncos fan or a Browns fan last year, you probably didn't think Russell Wilson was going to get traded to your team. You probably didn't think Deshaun Watson would be traded to your team. It goes to show the NFL is an unpredictable business, and if Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, and I don't think this is a wild thing to say out loud, can't come to terms on a contract, then... The Falcons do seem like a pretty good trade, tar, uh, trade destination. This is also the second time this week someone with a blue check mark, someone high up in the NFL world, has linked Lamar to the Falcons. So when there's smoke, might not be a huge fire, but there's a little bit of a flame growing, and we're going to keep checking on it for you guys here. I also don't think it's necessary for me to remind you guys about Lamar Jackson's stats, but... Lamar Jackson, he's a really good quarterback, right? I, I think this kind of goes without saying, but in case you're wondering, he's been a really good freaking QB. He won an MVP for a reason. Now, I also think it is worth reminding you guys that the last two seasons have not been Lamar's best. I'm not just talking stats, okay? I'm talking availability. And that might be worrisome for a team that would likely have to give up at least two first-round picks and sink in somewhere between 40 to $50 million per season on Lamar Jackson. Let's look at this quote from an NFL scouting director really quickly. Good running game, an offense that could be friendly to Lamar while helping him grow as a passer. Big receivers with a catch radius, which he needs due to accuracy issue issues. Young regime on an improving team looking for a quarterback solution. Not sure if that's their plan, but it would make sense. I wonder which team this NFL scouting director is talking about. Oh, the noise is getting quite loud surrounding your Atlanta Falcons. I definitely see the Falcons making sense and checking a lot of boxes, right? They've got the cap space. They've got the draft capital. All they really need, it's not just need, but one of the biggest things they need is a quarterback. Because this ground game last year was fantastic, right? This is something Lamar's been a part of for quite some time with Greg Roman. So I think when you add in Tyler Algier, an ascending running back, Drake London entering his second year, Kyle Pitts, finally some deep ball targets for him with Lamar, what's not there to get excited about here? But be honest, I want to hear from everyone watching, do you think the Falcons trade for Lamar Jackson? Am I putting on clown paint right now? Am I full of smoke? Am I absolutely making this stuff up here? Or do you think there's an actual real chance that Lamar Jackson is wearing a Falcons uniform next year? Let me know what you're thinking in the comment section. Moving on to the second portion of today's show, which is all about Mel Kuyper's latest mock draft. He released his first mock draft, I should say, and I want to see who he had the Falcons selecting. So let's run through picks one through seven. He didn't have any tra trade, so I think the Bears, if they don't move back, Jalen Carter makes sense. But regardless, C.J. Stroud to the Texans, Will Anderson to the Cardinals, Bryce Young to the Colts. 
Will Levis to the Seahawks. That's kind of an interesting one. Tyree Wilson. Now, that definitely impacts the Falcons because that's someone we've talked about before. Going to the Lions at 6. The Raiders go offensive line at 7, which means when Fontenot and company are on the clock at 8, they are selecting Miles Murphy, edge rusher out of Clemson. If I got any Clemson fans watching right now, I'm sure you'll be very ecstatic about this pick. And we'll break it down for you and get to know Miles Murphy in just a moment. But we are your home for the entire NFL offseason. From Falcons draft coverage to free agency to every little bit of news and rumors, this is the channel for you. We recently crossed 9,000 subscribers. Now, producer Nick Roloff, who does a fantastic job on this channel, is a bit of a coward. He accidentally scheduled himself off for today. He was afraid to face the noise of doing the beer bong. So we got that for you tomorrow. Plus, when we reach 10K subs, he's doing a belly shot. I'm not sure if it'll be his belly or someone else's belly. It'll be viewer discretion, no doubt about it. But we got that in the works for you guys here. Let's check out Miles Murphy, though. 116 tackles in his career at Clemson. 19 sacks, 36 tackles for loss, and 6 forced fumbles. I always think it's important to remind people that college defensive ends, they don't get the huge sack numbers because the college game is so quick and fast. Those quarterbacks don't hold on to the ball long enough, but edge rusher is exactly what the Falcons need. They have been one of the worst, if not the worst team in the NFL at getting after the quarterback the last two or three seasons. And so whoever is at the top of their board, if he's on the clock, if he's available when they're on the clock, I fully expect the Falcons to go defensive line and find a pass rusher. Let's read about what Mel Kuyper wrote now. The Falcons had just 21 sacks this season, which ranked 31st in the league, and they were led by Grady Jarrett, 6. Veteran edge rusher Lorenzo Carter added 4, while rookie second-round pick Arnold Ebichetti had 2.5. No other player had more than 2. They have to get better along the front seven. That could start here with Murphy, a complete defender who had 17 and a half sacks in three seasons at Clemson. Atlanta is another team with questions at quarterback, as rookie third rounder Desmond Ritter flashed at times at the end of the season. He's not a lock to be the week one starter, though I expect the organization to do a deep evaluation on this draft class and bring in another player to compete with him. For now, however, Murphy is too good to pass up. This is a little bit of my bias here. I'd rather they go Tyree Wilson, but in the mock draft, he goes beforehand. So not much Atlanta could have done in that spot here. But I think one of these two guys, you can't miss, at least from where we are right now as we get closer to the combine and get a more complete picture of these draft profiles and whatnot. I'm going to be happy with either one of these two picks if I'm a Falcons fan. So grade the pick for me. If Miles Murphy is the pick at number eight, what would you give Fontenot and the Falcons, A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know in the comment section. Now, there's an awesome deal going on at Fanatics I want to share with you guys while you're getting those draft grades in. It's this really cool Falcons crew neck. It's also on sale. you got to go to chatsports.com slash Falcons crew. Now, I've got that link for everyone in the comments and the description of today's show. Get it today. It's still a little bit chilly outside, so rep your favorite team while also staying warm when you're hanging out in the cater. Moving on here to our next segment here on the show, Mike Garofolo tweeted out that the Falcons interviewed Saints co-defensive coordinator slash D-line coach Ryan Nielsen for their D.C. job today. They're coming down the home stretch of their search. So if you don't know who Ryan Nielsen is, that's fine. It's not necessarily a household name. But I did think that this quote, which was pulled from The Athletic, from defensive lineman Carl Granderson back in 2021, kind of gives you a rough idea of what to expect. His coaching style is pretty much hardcore. He focuses and is big on technique and effort. He coaches pretty hard. He wants us to be big, nasty D linemen so we can play out there and destroy people. That, that sounds like a great defensive coordinator in my eyes, right? Especially with the Falcons' defense. That's going to be young, right? Let's say they go Miles Murphy. I'm thinking about this front line here. you got Arnold Abichetti. You've got Miles Murphy, Grady Jarrett. All guys early on in their career. That sounds like they need a coach who's going to come in there, coach them up, right? They're not a finished product, but they definitely need to know, you know what? It's time to play hard nose. Rough him and tough him football. I, I think Nielsen could be a really good 
sort of figurehead. Not figurehead, that's not the right word. I think Nielsen could be a really good stepping stone defensive coordinator. No, that's kind of mean too. The point I'm trying to make is that I think Nielsen, as I continue to degrade him after each sentence, I think Nielsen is exactly what this Falcons young defense needs, right? Where they are right now, they're not searching for a old defensive coordinator that can come in and push this team across the edge. No, they need to be coached up, and that is what Ryan Nielsen, I think, could do a good job of and seen. All right, don't lie to me, though. How excited would you be if Nielsen got hired? Scale 1 to 10. I don't know if my TED Talk right there just moved you from a 10 or to a 1. I'm sorry, Nielsen. I don't think I helped your stock that much for a couple 30 seconds. But let me know. Scale 1 to 10 in the comments section. As always, I appreciate all of you who made Falcons today a part of your afternoon. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and do so.